So now we're going to talk about the kernel that you're going to work on for problem set four. This was a project that four students did in last semester's class that's developed some since then. They built from other starting points. So the first thing you have to do to build the kernel is you've got to remove everything that depends on the OS. So you're basically getting rid of everything that's part of the standard library, everything that depends on a runtime system, everything that you can't do without already having an operating system. And then people built a library, Rust Core, that provides some useful abstractions. And all of this is built without starting from anything that depends on an OS. So one of the things, for example, what's in Rust Core is a definition of option. You've all used option in your Rust code. It's what most of those functions that do things like open files return. The code in Rust Core provides a definition of option. This is the whole code. It's not that long or complicated. Why did we need this? Why can't we use the standard option that's defined for something this simple? Does it really depend on an operating system? I think there's anything in the standard, built in the Rust standard library. And it's good to say that it's not built into Rust. Because it was built into Rust, we couldn't get rid of it, and we couldn't build an OS if it depended on that. Everything in Rust that depends on an OS is part of this standard library that you get rid of using this directive. What does option use that depends on having an OS? So most of it, most of this code is actually the same as what's in the original option code. But the original option code also has some methods that can fail. So it's got things like this, where you're getting the reference, assuming that it is a sum. And if it's not, you're failing. And that fail is going to print out some message. So that depends on an operating system. Right? Failing depends on an operating system. That's why all of these things that even if they seem really simple and not dependent on operating systems, like obviously the file libraries depend on an operating system. But anything that's doing anything like printing, anything that's doing anything that uses any machine resource, depends on an operating system. The good news is Rust Core defines some useful things, like option type and, and other things. And then Rust Boot was the first kernel built in Rust, a tiny 32-bit kernel that was released less than a year ago. And this was a major achievement. You could boot it, and it would print up a screen, bright red, and then would hang. This is a lot of progress towards having an operating system. Not something you would want to run on your laptop yet, unless you really like red and then various people forked it and built things that got a few steps further. PZ Zarn built a version that could actually print characters. Still a red background, so not, not too much progress on the color scheme, but um, other progress. And then what the team last semester did in Iron Kernel was extend it so you could actually get input as well, at least some kinds of input, get different colors and some other things. So, it's still a long way from the operating system you want to run on your laptop or maybe on your watch. And this is running on an ARM 32-bit processor, which is what the Pebble watches have, and uh, Raspberry Pis and lots of other things that are pretty cheap and easy to get. But still not enough to do too much. That should still be pretty exciting to you. So one of the linked articles for your spring break reading, which I hope some people read. If not, I hope you'll still read it, was talking about Gary Kildall's experience building operating systems. He's talking about one of the most exciting days in his life when he got it to boot and print a uh, prompt that may be not as exciting as making the screen red, but pretty exciting, almost as cool as visiting Niagara Falls. So good for Gary Kildall. How are we going to actually develop our kernel? So remember, if we're building a kernel, we don't want to rely on any other programs. We want it to run on the raw processor on the bare metal, and we're targeting this 32-bit ARM processor. We certainly don't want to do our development on the bare metal. Back in the really early days, and I hope one of the things you get from doing this is a real appreciation for how hard things were and how amazing it was that people were able to build computer systems in the early days before you had all the nice tools that we have now. You had to build your OS on the same machine that it was running on. You didn't have anything else. Today, no one does that. You have some development machine that already has a whole bunch of nice, useful tools and can do more than just give you a red background because it's pretty hard to write code on a system where all you can do is see a red background. And so you can do all your development on that machine, produce something that you're going to run on this other machine. What you need for that is what's called a cross-compiler. So you need some compiler that runs on one machine and produces a binary that is targeted to some other machine. There's no reason that the compiler that you run on your Ubuntu Intel x86 machine can't produce instructions and a binary that will run on some other processor. And that's what we're going to do. The other thing you want to do when you're doing kernel programming, 
until you get pretty far along, you probably don't want to actually have to get your code running on the actual other physical device. Right? That's already something that depends on a lot. And if it hangs or does something else, it's much harder to tell what's going on. What you really want to do is have an emulator that you can run on your development machine. That's what you're going to do. So QEMU is an emulator that can emulate various kinds of processors, including the 32-bit ARM that Iron Kernel is targeting. So you're going to run all that on your development machine, which is actually probably running in the virtual box running inside your actual machine. In order to build the kernel, so you're starting with some Rust code, you're compiling it, you're getting the LLVM, so LLVM is the intermediate language. This is then being compiled into assembly where you're picking the kind of assembly and the flags to the LLC compiler for LLVM select the ARM processor assembly. And then you're assembling and assemblers have really strange names, so this is the name of the assembler. The naming convention for assemblers is you've got the processor you're targeting, so that's what the ARM is for. The next part is the operating system you're targeting, which is none, so we don't have one yet. And this is the assembler a lot of embedded systems are using because they don't have an operating system either. Then there's the, the interface to the binary. And all these things affect the kind of object file you get out. And then you're putting all those object files together to get a binary that is what you're loading in the processor. And what happens when you run QEMU is you're starting your simulation of that processor with this binary in memory and the program counter pointing to the start of that binary. So that's all that's happening to be able to run your kernel code. The good news for you, you don't have to actually go through all those steps, although I encourage you to look at the make file. All you have to do is make run, and it will go through all those steps for you and start running your new kernel in QEMU.